Hello kids, men, women, children of all ages. It's Kenny B, the Madman, here at Lionel for Less. Uh, tonight I am going to do this post-war tender service that I promised and promised people I was going to do. So we're going to knock this out before I do other stuff on the new layout. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way the new layout's going and working. For the minimal investment that I put into it in time, it it's running these big engines pretty good, you know? Uh, you don't have to go hog wild to have a layout. This whole thing here is supported on two Costco tables, fold-out tables. This was my wife's idea, believe it or not. And I set the, the two sheets of 4x8 plywood on it. Bought these two sheets of, I believe this is 2 inch thick insula foam insulation. That's, that's the dead and the sound and just this top board. And the top board will be painted more like an earth tone color. So I can save on like ground cover does don't have to cover every little bit of the thing uh, I've been thinking and I probably will raise the the diameters of track as it goes up you know like have uh, the 31 the 54 72 31 54 72 88 are rolling around the top there because I've got to maximize the space that I have here. Uh, I should be able to have more than a loop on most of the other uh, radiuses, but you know I'm really pushing it in this tight space to run this 088. Uh, I'm happy that it worked, but you know I would like to have, and there can be a, like some six-inch fitters put in on each four sides to try to make it, you know, a little bit more even. Uh, whether I have that room or not, by the time I cascade the layers up, I'll have, by the time I get the layers cascaded up, I'll have to see. Uh, everything here is live. There is no slick productions here or nothing. So we just talk in trains, you know. Guys, guy to guy, gal to gal, kid to kid, person to person. Okay. And as for my lack of a camera, man, that's another thing. Uh, hopefully, I do got a couple more holders coming in for cameras that will allow me to, you know, show things better and hold the camera better because my wife bought me this this camera's not cheap it's a canon and i got it three years ago for christmas and i don't even know a tenth of the things it'll it will do <clears throat> i mean that's how good of a camera that it, it is uh things that you're gonna need before we start on this uh you will need a, uh, a Phillips head screwdriver. You can have, you know, a small set like this is invaluable to have for toy train repair. It's, it's, in fact, it, it's, it's a must. But uh, on a lot of the line out stuff, you can get by with the good old, good old screwdriver. Uh, I just invested in this longer magnetic screwdriver, but I did show you guys, you know, this thing. All you do is pass the screwdriver through the part that says magnetize a few times, and you'll see as you go along how that'll help you out. Okay, you will need a set of sockets something like these 
small sockets. Uh, I just picked this up for five dollars and it's got some kind of contraption. I haven't used it yet so here's what I, I've been using all these years. I bought this for a dollar at the dollar store. Uh, it opens up and inside it has a a few of the sockets that you'll need to do things with and this has worked great for me but you know if you can you know try to step up a little bit but this has done well we're going to need our oil you want it in a fine tip thing I paid like for five or six bucks for this fine tip thing because they're harder to find now than they used to be uh, if we're going to do some electrical repair on the wires which unfortunately this one doesn't need you would use uh, 18 gauge or 22 gauge super flex wire and replace these wires they run right there to where you could see where the roller pickup is and you just need a dab of solder on it be careful while you're in there you don't want to burn there's plastic things you know just give it a touch try to put the solder on the the end of the wire first and then go in and try to attach that to the old line L solder of course you, you want to have your flux and solder always use flux especially on the old stuff okay so uh, our good old thing CRC that you'll need for most jobs some 91% alcohol if you'd like some q-tips and uh, a piece of uh, 1000 grit wet dry sandpaper 2000 is better even if for you you're just starting now I'm gonna try to set this camera up where we can I can show you guys what the heck I'm doing here so I hope it all comes out good <clears throat> like I said you know maybe when we get a little bit bigger in form of LLC <laughs> we'll start to really do things right okay now I can see the viewfinder from here so that's good that'll help out okay like I said I just bought that big screwdriver but I'm finding out that it's a little bit uh, cumbersome so this one I've had a long time and you I got a new magnetic thing because I've had that other one for years and years it's still working now but these you pick up for like a dollar two and just put your regular screwdriver through there like this and you'll feel that start and you know this is invaluable because you lose these screws to some of this stuff and you start having troubles. Okay, I used this white paper so we could see things a little better. But you're going to want to have an older piece of uh, foam around too. And just flip the tender over. And there's a screw on this end and a screw on that end. A Phillips head. And you just take these two screws out. See that holding? Put it into your parts bin. Here's our second screw. Nothing else holds these on. That's it. 
See how that comes off? And where it really does good is when you go to put it back on. You start working on engines and stuff, the magnetic tool is almost a half to half thing. Uh, these two nuts hold the whistle itself in. If we wanted to take, take the whistle off, we would undo these. Because, you know, some of these are, okay, so re remove your body, just pull up on it, remove it, and as always, place it somewhere safe, far away from the tools, uh, the soldering iron, anything that could really screw it up. Okay, uh, using a... Uh, a soldering iron, you can destroy a nice shell and make it something that was very valuable, almost worthless. I've seen a lot of shells and cars in my days that the, the hot soldering iron just touched it and man, put a hole in it and it was done. Okay, our basic elements that, okay, we're going to remove this because we no longer need it now. That's to protect the shell. Excuse me. Let me try to get this light closer. It's after work. Had an okay day today. How was yours? Every day I don't wreck the truck, it's a great day. Uh, that's basically what we have inside. We've got our, re our whistle relay, our whistle, which will either be plastic, if it's post-war, or metal, which there still is some in post-war, metal whistles, and Here's the armature. I mean, yeah. I mean, here's the field. And you see, uh, this one is wired correctly. Now we could look in the Greenberg and check the wiring schematic to make sure, because sometimes, you know, people jury rig them just to make them work so they can sell them. You know, and, and or just, you know, to make the darn thing work. A lot of times, you'll need to remove this thing and go give it a bath. Because there I've seen bugs, insects, all type of dirty, nasty things inside of the whistles. Uh, this one's okay. The wheels are held on by things they call horseshoe clips. And you want to order around, you know, 25 to 50 of those to start working on trains. As if you want to remove wheels and stuff, you're going to have to put them back on. We're not going to do none of that here tonight, but if we did want to take it off, we would simply just take the screwdriver, come over here, and hold it with the other hand, and bend one, one end of it out. Okay, and we might be able to reuse it, we might not. It, it de all depends on what your luck is on taking it out. You know, this is just a basic thing to give your whistles a tune-up. Okay, so now we've got to find a washer that fits these two screws. Uh, I don't know which one in this new set I got. That one's a little too small. 
we'll try moving up another level and there it is uh, I wonder if the size 5 16th I thought for sure it would be metric but like I said you don't even have to spend five or six dollars on the the fancier set there you can go to the dollar store and get one because I've been using this for years and to be honest with you I really feel like using it again tonight because <laughs> it's it's what I'm used to yeah but uh I don't know. Let, let's try to use the, the new thing Okay, so this thing has an end on it. Looks like it clips here. And the first step would be to uh, just loosen that up. After you get it going, you take it off by hand. And as I said, when you're working on this stuff, try to wear these gloves because your, your hands will get dirty, okay? Into the pulse, into the parts bin it goes, okay? Just loosen that up. That one's into the parts bin. Okay, now using even pressure, You know what? We may have to solder a little bit. I forgot about that. Okay, this wire here, we are going to have to re-solder. So, we take a pair of wire cutters, which I hope I have nearby. Thank you. And we're going to cut that wire right there coming from the relay. Get underneath of it. Just snip it. So we don't, hopefully we won't have to use a new wire. But if we did, we just cut a piece, run it over there. Okay. And we may also have to, uh, it's been a while since I did one of these, so... Yeah, we're going to remove this wire from the field. Also. So again... We're going in with our pliers. And just give it a little snip. Now when you put these back on, you have to sand a little bit. Or scotch bright this, because they have a little bit of coating on them. And if you don't take that off, it, it won't solder right. And being now that I know we have to solder, as you can see, I never reverse none of this stuff. I'll get the soldering iron hot here. Give me a moment to get it plugged in. There's the camera. Okay, and you know we always want to respect the soldering iron because it can it can mess a lot of shit up and it also can burn the shit out of you too. So get that plugged in and let that start warming up. Okay, now we should be able to just lift up on this. Which, of course, it won't be that easy. Okay, and see? Now we're, we are at the commutator face. Now, see how dirty that is? That has to be clean. See how much 
carbon has it's not dirt it's the old carbon from the brushes okay I'm gonna get a pair of uh, pliers here and this is what we've got left of the old brush you know and it's barely making contact at all see and there's oil oil on it that's not helping things that's for sure and we're going to have another bin and put these parts into or you could put them back in this other same bin but that's up to you okay we're going to remove the other brush see and it, it, it it fits into the spring it's got a little end on it and it, you got to insert it into the spring and then put it into there now see that one's cooked too pretty much done and it's oily okay bear with me I will get this right and you will understand it. Uh, we want to take, we want some toothpicks. Definitely got to have those. And invest in Q-tips. Don't be fighting your wife for them. I did for years and it's just better to to have your own and use your own stuff okay keep it away from separate from the family we're going to take this spray the CRC on it and just get that first basic layer of gunk off there from the carbon from the old brushes look at that and you wonder why it won't sound okay so this is dirty real dirty let's spray it again clean it up a little more so we can see what what we're doing at least here okay and you'll go through probably on this job probably 25 q-tips I always like to take the end and flare it out a little bit and spray around the whole thing hit this you gotta watch for that stuff though if you flare them out clean this stuff around I mean you're in there anyway so you might as well clean it up Spray the CRC directly on, too, is another way. And just clean that old carbon off of there and dirt. Go on the field there. Clean that off. You see what we're taking off there? Okay. Now, we're going to flood this with CRC again and go in between each one of these segments of the commutator. Let me try to zoom in here. Can you see that? Okay, and just take it and go through there and get and get that stuff out. Be careful because these have the wires on the end of them and you can break them so go through come this way with it it's the safe way clean those segments out we'll go this way this is the safest way for beginners you know 
See that? We're getting that stuff out of there. Spray it again. Flip the toothpick around. Get another clean toothpick. Go on that same segment. Okay, nothing's coming out of that one. No more, no more carbon. So let's move to this one. Just very easily take that. Okay, now we shot that one. That one's clean. Here's the last one. Shoot it again. Go between there. Get the carbon out. Use some of the CRC as force to blow some of that crap out of there. Okay. I think we're looking good on the segments now. All right. The next thing we want to do, which is the safest way when you start to do the repairs yourself and the tune-ups is spray the CRC onto the Q-tip again and just work it around and you'll see this will start to become clean every time we've shot it so far we've took off more of the carbon. Now that's probably good enough right there. Okay, don't be worried if you see a few little things in there. What we can do for that is take our wet dry sandpaper, spray it with the CRC and ever so gently just Go like that. Some people call this resurfacing the commutator. It's a fancy word, isn't it, for such a easy task. Keep things wet, just like you know what. Keep it wet. And nothing can go wrong. Try to move the most circular direction you can. It's hard to go in a perfect circle. You never will. I still can't. And what we're doing is we're shining that up. We're going to give those new brushes a nice place to ride. and let them create their own new grooves in there. Like I said, try to keep it in the most circular motion that you can. Hold the paper, spin the thing. It's the easy, most probably easiest way. Okay, so now we did that. We'll take a Q-tip again. Spray it, clean it all up again. Okay, now we can go like on the sides, over here, clean. You know, this is really not necessary, but you can if you want to do a complete nice job. Okay, but see just there we took more stuff off. Okay, the next thing we'll move on to will be the brush plate here. See that's got quite a, a bit of carbon on it. Soak it with the CRC. Take your Q-tip, clean that stuff up. 
the best you can.